today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to use the byproduct from an electric composter. Now there's a lot of hate out there about electric composting and that is because it's technically not composting, it's heating and grinding. And this can easily be achieved with, for example, a dehydrator and a grinder, or in some cases people say a bread maker, etc. and so forth. But the main purpose of this video is to go over what you can do with dried out ground up food byproduct that is not yet composted without harming your plants, which is the reality of when we're using something of this nature. So I actually enjoy these so much that I got one for my office here at work. And that is because during the winter months here in Canada, our compost, even our hot compost, freeze entirely, which leaves us at the mercy of Bokashi composting and worm composting. And Bokashi composting is only possible if you have a place to store all these buckets until the springtime when you can dig your trenches and actually put them in or slip them into a hot compost that is finally thawed out. So I did bring one here at the office. I used to do Bokashi composting. However, with the electric compost, there are no rules, which is very ideal when working with a lot of blue collared men. So this composter here is actually off of Amazon. It's the Amazon version. This is the brand name. This is different from the one that I showed you that was at my house, but it worked the exact same as that one. The container or the bucket is slightly smaller, I would say, and the composting ability is, I mean, it works good for food when it comes to things like bags or um, tissue, that sort of thing. Not a not hundred percent, not my absolute favorite, but the byproduct in this case for my office waste looks like this. It looks like someone uh, during the composting process maybe threw a bit of extra in here. The byproduct in here is going to be relatively dry most of the time. Sometimes it can have some moisture. If it does, it's a little bit clumpy, but I'm gonna put this in the bin, which is what I do for work. So this guy will compost, it's a, a touch screen start button. There's no weight on it, no nothing. You just touch it and it goes. So I've been using this in my office for probably about two weeks now. And this is kind of how much byproduct I have in there. This is great, like this tissue is great for moisture control in my worm bin, which is what I actually use this for a majority of times, but I'll show you how to actually apply this to the garden. All I'm gonna do is dump this in. And because it's so dry, it has no smell, no one notices, including the men in this office that complain about this sort of stuff. And yeah, we're good to go. I'm gonna continue filling this up and put this back together. If you wanna grab one of these cheaper electric composters, I will leave the tag for it or the link for it down in the description below. So majority of what's been going into here has been coffee grounds, paper towels, and then the odd lunch item. Okay, so we are back in the garden and one thing I definitely will say is that the byproduct of this is going to vary depending on what you used in it. So this one is very light colored and it's got a ton of eggshells in it. The reason for this is because my sister's wedding was this past weekend and I made her wedding cake, which means two dozen eggs. And what better way to compost them to stick them in here? Now, in the case of eggs, when it comes to using them in the garden, something like this I would actually give to my worms normally, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna actually use it to show you what I'm gonna do with this byproduct. But this is great for worms. It has grit. Someone argued me on the fact that worms don't eat grit, but they do need grit. They're, they're like chickens. Yeah, they need grit to be able to digest things. <laughs> so ideal case would be to use that there. However, if you want to use it directly in the garden, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So one thing to keep in mind if you're gonna use shells in the garden is that birds love eggshells. And so putting eggshells in said garden is going to attract the birds. That includes sparrows and everything else in between. So just do keep that in mind. Now this is just a herb garden. I pretty much did a chaos garden with this, meaning I didn't put anything in necessarily any lineups and I just kind of chucked it in. And all I'm gonna do here is sprinkle it on the surface. I am not going to incorporate it whatsoever, just a sprinkle surface. Now me sprinkling it on the surface is actually not particular to the fact that it's eggs. That goes for any electric compost byproduct. The reason for this is because it's technically 
not composted. Yes, that is right. Technically not composted, meaning it has not been broken down by microbes into a bioavailable form for plants. All that's been done, all that's been done with it is it has been heated up and ground down. And that means that we need to be cautious about incorporating it into the soil because incorporation to the soil will actually reduce the nitrogen or the bioavailable nitrogen to our plants. Similar to if we were to incorporate a mulch or a compost that is not yet cured, we wanna watch out for these things so you do not wanna incorporate this into your garden. Now the technical exception to this rule, if you wanted to incorporate it into the soil would be a trench compost setup. So what you would do would be dig a hole or a lane that is out of the roots reach or in a space that you don't intend to plant right away. And then you would dig a hole and pop that compost into there. And that also would work. One thing I definitely have noticed with this electric composter is if the product you're putting in is particularly moist, meaning something that is really wet, uh, like a co coffee grounds or tea bags combined with just your regular plant material, what can end up happening is a clumping of the byproduct, meaning kind of like hard blocks. Now this I would not scatter on the soil surface because it's just gonna take a really long time to break down. It's gonna be super obvious that you just have plant debris on your soil surface. So please watch out for that. But what I would do is I would actually just toss this into a compost, regular old hot compost, tumbler, you name it, or a trench compost and then incorporate it um, with just your regular greens and browns but this would be more on the brown side because it's been heated up and ground down if you want to mix this in with an actual potting soil you could i would just keep it under 10 percent by volume so if you have a 10 cups of potting soil or then i would only put in one cup of the actual byproduct from this compost. It's really important because it, it's gonna lock up a lot of nutrients when it's incorporated into the soil profile. But that's all I have for you guys in regards to the byproduct when it comes to electric composting. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will talk to you next time. Bye.